let's say you've been using a large a language model and you are interested in extending it you are interested in it being able to do something new or you're interested in teaching it some new information and so when it comes to extending a large language model you have two main options you can teach it new information via embeddings or you can fine tune it and so in today's video i'm going to be teaching you how you can fine tune a large language model to do something new and interesting but before we get started as always all the apps and all the resources that i'm going to be mentioning in today's video you can get them from my patreon page and you can learn more about our amazing patreon community using the link just below the video and so when it comes to extending a large language model you have two main options at your disposal you can go the embeddings route or you can go the fine tuning route now what is the difference well it's actually very very simple with embeddings you are giving your model access to more information so you're essentially teaching it new data so this could be companies financial reports it could be a private code repository that's not available on the internet basically you're giving it data and so in addition to whatever the model can do right now and all the data and all its behavior it's going to have access to new data that you're going to provide to it via embeddings now fine tuning on the other hand is very very different fine tuning changes the model's behavior okay so via fine tuning you can teach it a secret language you can get it to clone yourself you can get it to act like another person okay so with embeddings you're not changing how the model behaves you're not changing how the model thinks you're just giving it access to more data via embeddings now with fine tuning you're changing the way the model is going to behave because what you're doing is you're telling the model okay when i ask for this i want you to respond like this when i say this i want you to respond in a certain way and so these two methods are completely different they have completely different applications because they're designed to do completely different things but in today's video we're going to be fine tuning a large language model to do something unique and something interesting now the next thing that we need to do is we need to find an llm that we can fine tune so there are tons and tons of awesome llms out there lots of open source llms that you can tinker and you can fine tune to essentially do whatever you want them to do so one good place that you should check out is hugging face okay so if you head over to huggingface.co you can essentially scroll down and you can click on this link which is an open llm leaderboard now once you navigate to this page you're going to have a list of open source llm models and there's going to be some specs regarding their performance and some other things and you can kind of browse around and you can decide which llm model that you want to use so there are tons and tons of interesting llm models and there are new llm models being released every week actually now the llm model that i decided to work with is called falcon now falcon comes in two versions there's the 7 billion version and there's the 40 billion version as well and i decided to work with the smaller one so that it's easier to fine tune and easier to deploy and overall it's quicker to work with i've actually spent some time researching and i read that this is an awesome model it's actually very very easy to fine tune as well and so this is falcon right here this is the 40 billion version and there's the 7 billion version as well and so if you open this model here you're going to be on the page that looks something like this you can learn more about this model so falcon 7b is a 7 billion parameters decoder only model that has been trained on 1500 billion tokens okay and it has 4.7 million downloads last month so you can kind of learn more about the model there's some technical specs and things like that 
Now, before you can fine tune this model, you need to decide what kind of data that you're going to be fine tuning with. And that data is going to come in the form of a data set. And so here on Hugging Face, you can click on data sets and you can get an idea of what kind of data sets exist. Okay, so there's awesome chat GPT prompts. And so you can potentially train your new model on awesome prompts. There's tiny stories here. There's, you know, meta text and if you scroll down you can see that there are tons and tons of different data sets you can also head over to kaggle.com where you can get more data sets so for instance here on kaggle.com there is a reddit data set so you can potentially train your llm on reddit data which is going to be very very interesting and so at this point you have to ask yourself what do you want your model to do what kind of data do you want your model to spit out meaning that you're going to be giving it a certain data and that model is going to spit out with some other data. So that is what you have to ask yourself. Now, for this specific fine tuning exercise, I decided that we are going to fine tune our LLM to generate YouTube titles, but not just any YouTube titles, YouTube titles that Mr. Beast himself think of. And so what I did was I went to Mr. Beast's channel I copied as many video titles as I could and then I pasted them into this Google Sheets spreadsheet here and as a result I ended up copying around 300 and something 330 uh, YouTube video titles and this here is the beginning of our data set now just the titles is not enough remember we need to train this model by giving it certain information and then expecting a very very specific type of information back and so in addition to titles we need another field and more specifically we need a description field because the way that this model is going to work is that we are going to give it a description of the video and we want this model to generate a title that looks something like this and so what we need to do now is we need to generate descriptions for these videos and obviously you can do it by hand if you want it's not very difficult but i decided to employ chat gpt for this challenge and so i went to chat gpt and i asked it to help me write a video description for these mr beast video titles okay and so here I primed the prompt with three examples, essentially three titles and three descriptions. I gave it a title from the spreadsheet and then I wrote a very brief description for the same video with this title. And so we have, you know, three titles, three descriptions. And then for the last one, I asked it to come up with a description. And so the title was last to leave circle wins $500,000. And it went ahead and it generated a description, right? It said title for a video about a competition where the last one to remain in the circle wins big money. Now, as you can see, it works for one video, but it's going to be very, very time consuming to do the same thing for 300 videos. And so to speed up the workflow, I went to dust.tt, which is an amazing tool that I covered in one of the previous videos in detail. You're going to see a video right there. But essentially, this tool allows you to create pipelines that you can feed lots and lots of data and get back lots and lots of results. And so here I created a very, very simple simple pipeline that has an input it has examples and here we have a prompt that's connected to gpt4 and so if you take a look at our data you can see that we have a list of all of these titles here and for the examples i have three examples just like in the initial prompt and the purpose of these examples is to help the model to come up with a response that's similar to the examples that i have listed here and so I ran this flow on 99 titles and this is the result I got. So we got the titles that we specified and we got a GPT generated brief description here. Then I took all of this data and I created another spreadsheet here with the title column and a description column. And at this point, we have a very, very high quality data set that we can use to train our new model. Now, the way that we're going to be fine tuning our LLM is by using something called Google Colab.
And what Google Colab allows you to do is it allows you to load up a script and to execute it on a machine that is going to be a lot more powerful than yours. And so here's a simple script that I put together as a result of studying other open source scripts that teach you how to fine tune this model. And I'm going to make the script available, but really all you need to do is go through each of the cells and click on this play button. And every time you click on this button, you're going to be running a specific piece of code. And I'm going to be explaining you exactly what it does as we go along. Now, the beauty of running your code like this is all of this is very very customizable you can easily swap out your own data set and use that to fine-tune your own model okay and so in this section we're going to be loading our model so you see that falcon 7b this is what this piece of code is doing essentially so we're going to wait until this finishes now, as you can see, it's almost done loading the model. Now I am using the beefier CPU version of Google Colab. So it's going to be faster than the free version, but the free version is also very, very good. Okay. So as you can see, it's finished here and we need to just continue doing the other things. These are going to be very, very fast. Here we are setting up our new model right here that we're going to be fine tuning in just a moment. And this part here is crucial because that is where it's going to be creating the prompts for our test data. So it's expecting this file, Mr. Beast title generator. And so all you really need to do is go to file, download, comma, separated values, which is exactly what I did. And now you just need to drag this file here. So here I'm dragging this file right here it uploaded now we have this file here and so it's looking up this file and it's creating a prompt where a human is giving a description but the ai needs to come up with a title and so the idea is we're gonna feed it a ton of data it's gonna learn what titles that we're looking for and then later on we can give it a description and it's gonna come up with a very very mr beast like title okay so we're going to click here. We're going to run this part. We're going to load up the data. It's done. And here we can view our data set. Okay. So here we can see the first item in, the, in our data set. And this is good because this allows us to view essentially that we loaded the data. Okay. So this is title description. So this is the title that we provided. I bought the world's largest firework, 600,000. And this is the description title for a video about purchasing and setting off the world's largest firework. Okay. And so this is just the first record. We have like a hundred records in our data set. We're going to scroll down and right here is the training part. Okay. So we're going to start the training part. And now, as you can see, the model is training. So it's going to take a little bit more than a minute here on this beefier CPU. I think with the free plan, it's going to take like five or six minutes or something like this. And with each step, this loss needs to become smaller, right? So it started out with 3.8, now it's 3.1. And the idea is as it gets lower and lower, the model is performing better and better. Okay, so it's 2.9, 2.6, 2.88. And so as you can see, this number is gradually getting smaller and smaller, which is good because this means that the model is learning with our data. So it should be able to perform, okay? So let's wait a couple of more moments. All right, so the training is done and now we are ready to send some prompts to the model and see what happens, okay? And here I have a function that's going to send the first record to the model, meaning it's going to send the first description, get a title, and compare it to the title that's already in the data set just to see which result is better. So let's go ahead and run it right here. And now we are communicating with the model that we've just fine-tuned. And so here's the prompt title for a video about purchasing and setting off the world's largest firework. And this is the answer that our model came up with. Let the world's largest firework display be yours. How to buy and set off your own spectacular show. And this was the answer that was in our data set. So you can kind of decide which one is better. This is probably a little bit more clickbaity, but this is still not a bad title at all. Now we can also modify this function to generate a title for a random description. So for instance, I can change this. So maybe something like title for a video about where people need to keep standing 
to win five hundred thousand dollars so something like this so let's go ahead and send it the prompt and see what kind of title it comes up with so we're going to run this function again with the new data okay title for a video about where people need to keep standing all right so these are the results we got so we sent it this prompt here title for a video about where people need to keep standing to win five hundred thousand dollars okay and this is the response that it sent us five hundred thousand dollars standing challenge who can keep standing for five minutes okay and so as you can see not a bad title at all you can probably make it a little shorter but still not a bad title now remember we only sent a hundred records to fine tune our model if you can send in more data like 200 300 or even 500 records the completions that the model is going to be generating is going to be a lot more accurate now if you're happy with your fine tune model the next thing that you can do is deploy it so you can just click here click on this link right here get your tokens you want to get your right token just click here copy it right here go back here paste it click on login and now you've logged into hugging face and from here on you can easily deploy your model to the hugging face repository and once you do that your models are gonna appear here now from here you can easily deploy your model by clicking on deploy you can do inference endpoints click here and you can easily deploy your model and that's going to give you an API access. And at this point, you can build an app that's going to access this model via an API call. And so you can easily build a Flutterflow app that accesses this model using an API interface. And that's going to allow your users to access this model and let the model work for them. Now, like I said before, this collab file is very, very easily customizable because all you really need to do is create your own data set, upload it here, and then specify the columns right here from which you want to build your prompt from. And so I'm going to be making this collab file available so you can easily fine tune your own model for your specific needs and purposes. Now, if you guys are interested in no code and you're serious about taking your no code knowledge up a notch or two, then you definitely need to check out our amazing patreon community because when you join our amazing patreon community not only will you get access to all the resources that i talked about in this video but you're gonna get access to all the no code apps that i built on this channel plus you're gonna get access to extra content such as q a's live streams behind the scenes content and our incredible patreon supported masterclass series where i do a deep dive on a specific topic that the community votes on plus you're going to be supporting the channel and supporting my work and that is greatly greatly appreciated and so if you want to build amazing apps quickly and easily check out our amazing patreon community and consider becoming a member you can learn more about it using the link in the description below the video